Welcome to one of the best educational shows around the world with Natural TV. This is your host, Dr. Yavu Selim Salai. I am truly excited and thrilled that I'm able to host you on this brand new show with an amazing guest. And this show is known as SIT. Don't think SIT means just sitting down. No, SIT stands for Study in Turkey. In this show, we're going to host people from all walks of life, pioneers from universities around the globe, and able to give you the best higher education opportunities around the world. So whether you're a teacher or a student or anyone interested in education, this is your show. So keep tuned with SIT, Study in Turkey. I'm your host, Dr. Yavuz Selim Salai, physician, entrepreneur, and venture architect. And today, I am really thrilled and excited that I'm able to host a guest of honor, a phenomenal person, Sean Haider, who was born in Karachi, Pakistan, and moved around the world, from Dubai to Canada to United States to Turkey. And he is actually the founder of an amazing company, Teacherix. So I'm really thrilled and excited that Sean is here today. Sean Haider, welcome. I'm really excited that you're here. And thank you, thank Sean. You, yeah, thank you for having me on the show. Dear Sean, I know you very well. But for our viewers, can you tell a little bit about who Sean Hyder is? What excites Sean? Sure. Um, so basically, as you mentioned, uh, I have lived you know, around the world. I've traveled quite a few places and worked and established business in almost three, four countries in the world. Turkey being the... Uh, Last stop, uh, I came to Turkey as an uh, ESL teacher, which is English as a second language teacher, and worked here with various different schools for about three to four years, four different contracts. And then in 2015, set up my uh, educator recruitment company, which uh, went global last year when we set up Teacherix in New York. That just to give you a background. And in terms of your company, your company is now in New York and operating globally. And can you tell a little bit about, you know, before entering TeacherX, because we'll talk about TeacherX in detail. I want to first go in more detail about Sean, because what really motivated you to become an English teacher and what motivated you to go around the world. We want really our viewers to get to know Sean better before we move into your company and things around education between Africa, Turkey, United States. Okay, uh, so in, in 2013, 12 or 13, um, I got interested in the concept of going around the world and being an English teacher. And, and, and usually, you know, if you're living in the US, and you want to travel Europe or Middle East or Turkey, different places, you have to pay for your ticket. You need money in the bank, which is, you know, very difficult for average people. But when you have a job as an ESL teacher, it offers you culture exchange. It offers you salary. It offers you airfare. So it's a very um, great opportunity for those that would like to venture into teaching. In, in this field, you make a lot of friends, you get to know, you inspire a lot of kids. Uh, I'm sure in my, in my career of teaching in two different countries, I probably, um, the most exciting part was when, when, when students come to you and say they've accomplished something or they love working with you, they love you as a teacher. So that, that is something that motivates you when you see progress with kids. You know, Dr. Avis, you're in business, so you know in business, we get excited when we sign a contract when we get a deal and the deal uh, flows through, right? But in the teaching arena, what really excites you is when you see those little kids in the classroom getting inspired by your work, by your stories, by your uh, teaching abilities, that's what gave me the courage um, and the passion to continue in teaching. And then in 2015, I realized I could teach all day, even 24 hours a day, and I can only reach out to so many kids. And then I got into getting hundreds and hundreds and thousands of teachers like me jobs at very different schools. So in a way, I'm multiplying the effect that I had just by myself. This is really an amazing story. So you are actually learning, educating yourself, and then you're paving the way for people 
to become teachers and really experience what you experience. This is an amazing uh, success. Congratulations, Sean. So uh, I want to ask you, how do you see the current educational world around the globe? You know, uh, when you look at the current educational exchanges between Turkey, Africa, United States, China, the rest of the world, because you're able to hold the pulse. Where is the world going? How do you see the uh, things moving forward? Uh, Dr. Yavuz, uh, as you know, with this COVID-19 situation, which we're all embroiled in for the past four or five months, um, a lot of things have moved to online teaching during this time because in-person teaching could not be carried out for you know various different health reasons and uh, to curb the spread of COVID-19. Um, but I don't want people to really you know put all their eggs in one basket. I always feel, and, and, and you will probably agree with me as being a doctor, that humans are social beings. You cannot lock them up in a room or in front of the computer for the rest of their life and imagine that they will progress. That is not going to happen. They are social beings. They need interaction. They need people. They need to talk. And this is how kids learn. So I do not think, uh, contrary to many companies and many, many, uh, you know, predictions that everything will be 100% online, I don't see that happening. And in during my communication with the uh, education ministry in Ontario and with the education department in New York, yes, they are all uh, planning a sort of hybrid education system. So it, it won't be 100% online and it will probably not be 100% in person. So Canada agrees on a 70-30 ratio, 70% in person, 30% online. New York is somewhere between 50 and 70, same. So we will see that these two will be combined. You know, obviously school wants to be ready for the next, God forbid, pandemic and kids are locked up because this time around, uh, hardly any schools were ready for online. Even teachers were not equipped. So I see that the trend will carry on, but in-person schooling is, is here to stay. It's not going to disappear forever because there's no progress without that. It's funny what you're saying. I, there was a joke around and uh, they were saying, what actually moved your company to becoming digital? Your CEO, your CFO, or COVID-19? So it looks like uh, many things are becoming digital because of not uh, human beings and we are not truly uh, prepared for this uh, pandemic to begin with but you know uh, like you said so there is still the human element and touch where people want to interact the kids want to interact either you need to develop the technology so they can do that interaction until that is ready uh, you will have to make that at least mix as you said so uh, where does teacher extends in this amazing equation? I am, I'm really excited about uh, your company. I know Prudential First is also a teacher X company and what you have done is amazing in terms of really almost like a marketplace, bringing people from all walks of life, whoever wants to teach, wherever they want to teach, they come to Sean and they come to teacher X. Did I get it right? Uh, yes, Dr. Travis, you are, you know, you, we've known each other for a while and you're right, Prudential First was the first company that we established in Turkey. Uh, but we realized last year when we started getting a lot of uh, global attention from schools from the Middle East, from South America, from Europe, and they were contacting us. So uh, we decided at that time that we should have a platform which is universal, number one. Uh, number two, easy to access. Uh, for uh, people around the world. And this is why we set up uh, Teachrix uh, last year in November. And that is a platform which is open to all the teachers around the world. And it's open to pretty much all the schools around the world. And um, as, as we go further in, in, in question, I will tell you one of the technology, uh, artificial intelligence technology that we're working on which will make us stand out from all the rest of the job boards and platforms which are you know present in this in this field excellent, excellent. so uh, with the covid 19 as things are moving more digital what do you think about the homeschooling 
do you think the homeschooling will actually increase, decrease? Of course, depending on the part of the world. What is the current trend, Sean? Uh, the homeschooling is very much related to teacher readiness to teach online. I mean, we can have homeschooling, we can have the technology, but until, unless we have those teachers trained and ready, it's useless. You know, it's like, uh, we have a saying, it's like buying a Ferrari, but you don't have the roads to drive it. So having this amazing car that has zero to 60 in three seconds, but you don't have the road where you can take it and test drive it. So it's the same as we say, teachers are, uh, they weren't ready for it, uh, you know, and, and I don't think that the schools invested, uh, there wasn't enough budget for professional development, or even the schools were thinking that it will come to completely online. Yes, there are some online programs that they used, but we noticed that the frustration wasn't so much from the student side, but from the teacher side. They couldn't figure out Zoom, there were a bunch of issues with the, uh, with Zoom in the beginning, then they moved to something else, and then they couldn't figure out how to work. So I feel that schools need to invest in their teachers. They need to do this. They need to bring them up to speed. There has to be online courses. We are in talks with Google for developing an online course for Google School. So teachers could be trained for that. So if, if that is done, um, online will increase, obviously, as the uh, more schools adapt to LMS system of teaching. Uh, they bring on a lot of online curriculum, it will increase. But again, as I previously said, it will never be 100%. And it cannot because the progress will stop. The, the student, you know, the, the progress that you see students make is has to do with the environment, the social environment. Sitting in front of a laptop and learning, uh, especially at the age of K-12, I can see post. I can see universities because those students have already acquired a lot of social skills. But you know, when we're talking kindergarten to grade 12, this is where the development takes place, the development phase, the social skills, and that needs to be done uh, by you know exchanging and interacting with humans. So where does the brick and mortar school situation go? So in terms of the future of brick and mortar schools, what do you see is going to change? What is going to, do you think will stay the same, Sean? Okay, so um, basically the education system, the way it is, uh, hopefully will have a lot of uh, changes until they're all praying for a vaccine, as you know, we all are. Once the vaccine comes out, uh, you will see the drop rate on online education and going to in-person education. But until then, um, especially we heard from the pre-K and kindergarten level, parents are not ready to send those kids to the school for health reasons because they can wait. A year to start off in life is not worth killing that, that student or getting that student injured or you know somehow taking the chances with health. But people in middle school, kids in middle school and high school, it's difficult because then they end up losing a year. So we've seen during uh, the pre-K and kindergarten level, a lot of parents are apprehensive. They will not be sending kids unless they're 100% sure. Um, we feel that the trend, like I said, online trend will continue until a vaccine is developed or until uh, COVID reaches a, a level where it's either called immunity or you know you understand better somehow where they feel that it's manageable. After that, it will go back to the on uh, the the in person version. Majority of the education being done in person. I see. So, Sean, uh, you know lots of languages, uh, and I know you can count several of them for me and for our viewers. But in your platform, are you focusing on uh, you know in Teachrix teaching English, or do you plan to also teach Urdu or Hindi or? Turkish or other languages. How does, do you think the second, third phase will roll out? But first, I want my viewers to hear how many languages Sean Haider knows. Oh, okay. So, uh, <laughs> um, basically, you know, I was raised in various different countries. At a very young age, uh, my father had moved to Emirates and Dubai, which was then, I think, released um, and became an independent uh, country. Um, back in the uh, 70s. So we spent some time there. 
but there was hardly any acquisition of the language because the population was all immigrants back then. So they were all spoke English. But then we moved to Saudi uh, and I was raised in, uh, I spent a lot of years in Jeddah. So this is where I picked up Arabic because I was, uh, my English was always good. You know, Pakistan is, is uh, an ex Indian and British colony region. So English is a, is a, is a, is a must language there. So in Saudi, I used to teach these kids English and I picked up Arabic from them. And then when we moved to Canada, as you know, French is uh, uh, one of the languages in Canada. So early school years, you know, I, I took French. Obviously, I haven't practiced much at all. Same thing with Turkey. Uh, my Turkish language isn't very advanced. It's beginner level because I don't, you know, being a teacher here, we speak English. We never get to practice the language. Uh, but those languages are the, but I consider myself fluent in uh, in Urdu, which is native language, English, which is my second native language, and then a little bit of Arabic. I can manage a uh, conversation in, in uh, French and Turkish. On Natural TV, we have a program about learning Turkish. Maybe we'll invite you and help you to learn, improve your Turkish in exchange for giving us an English education course or something like that. So uh, I will go right into a commercial break, Sean. And we'll, ladies and gentlemen, I have Sean Haider, and we'll be right back. Stay tuned with Seth, study in Turkey. Thank you. gentlemen welcome back to study in Turkey I'm really thrilled and excited that I'm able to bring an amazing gentleman a true educational leader phenomenal person a good friend of mine Sean Haider he is actually talking about the future of education and also he has an amazing company known as TeacherX which he will tell more us about how, what the differences TeacherX is offering so whether you're a teacher at underworld and wants to teach English this is the platform. So, Sean, welcome back, and uh, I really appreciate your time and being with our uh, amazing viewers across Africa. Uh, I, in this part, I really want to understand uh, what you think more about, you can tell for us, about TeacherX. So, basically, what do you think TeacherX is offering different than other platforms? Um, thank you, Dr. Yawus. I was waiting when you will ask me this question. Okay, so um, we established TeacherX because we found uh, a, a problem in the market. When it comes to recruitment of teachers, uh, the huge issue is, so you get a teacher from U.S. somewhere, Texas, or let's say Iowa or California, to come and work. We found a huge, very good job for them in Qatar, for example. Right. So they will be moving to Qatar. You can do criminal background checks on them to see if they have a clean record in the U.S., of course, with their permission. You can see degree and certificate verifications and you can speak on, on, on Skype or Zoom to see if the person is, you know, compatible with the school. But the problem is there are three sensitivities that no one has any test for, which is called social sensitivities cultural sensitivities and religious sensitivities. So us being in this recruitment field for over six years and have hired, you know, hundreds and hundreds of teachers um, for different locations, we found out, for example, a teacher we hired from a different region and uh, hired, for example, a country. Once he went there, he had problem adjusting to the social sensitivities. He wasn't very, uh, you know, polite about the religious sensitivities. They didn't know how to handle that. Americans are very vocal, as you know more than I do. Um, so to overcome this, we were last year, we sat down with uh, dozens of data scientists and said, let's sit down. Let's, do you think we can design an algorithm-based crawlers that we can have these, you know, we have 10,000 teachers on our platform and we're increasing every day. 
So there should be an option for them to do their own compatibility test. Okay, they're planning to go on Qatar. They should click the button and say, am I compatible to teach in Qatar? And the algorithms would go and crawl all over the social media, all over your postings you have done in your past, all the pictures that you've posted, and come back and, say, and, and tell you, hey, you've been very vocal about Shiite Muslims. Maybe this is not the country that you should go. Maybe you should take a European country. Or you've been very vocal about Tibets or Tibetans. Maybe China is not the place for you to go. So when we researched this, we found out this would be an excellent niche. And, and, and not just in the recruitment, in, in the teacher recruitment industry, but in, in the recruitment industry overall. So this is what we have an edge. There is not a competitor that we have that has this. And this is the reason. Actually, in March, I was presenting my company to a New York investment office for this. Uh, but because of COVID-19, we delayed. I'm planning to go in July. So this is the edge that is going to change everything. Because to hire a teacher, the cost is around 4,000 US dollars, the cost of hiring. To hire a wrong teacher, the cost is 16,000 US dollars. So you can imagine the savings and the headache for the school. And the worst problem is, if you hire a teacher, he, went, he came to Qatar in August and you didn't like him, you cannot replace easily a teacher during mid-school year because everyone is in contract. So this is the edge, the three sensitivities that we're gonna roll out. This is amazing. I mean, this can be a special tool and I guess artificial intelligence and other sorts of uh, apps are in, in the process in this, but uh, this, is, this technology can be used all over the world, that's something you can sell to LinkedIn, probably, you know. <laughs> yeah. So I'm really yeah. impressed because at the end, the idea is to really bring the right people to the right uh, place and make them make both parties happy. This is almost like a matchmaking program, but you're matching with the educational, uh, you know, platform. Uh, tell me more about TeacherX. What's your vision, you know, moving forward? We would like to be uh, the pioneer in educator recruitment. We would like to reach out to as many schools as possible. Um, and, and whenever a school feels a need for a teacher, and we're not talking just about bringing international teachers, overseas teachers. For example, a school in Atashahir is looking for uh, local Turkish teachers should be able to go on our site and search, put the filters on there. I'm looking for someone that lives on the Asian side of Istanbul and get the teachers to reply and, and work with them. So this is what the vision is uh, for teachers to be very localized site as well, as much as it would be international site. So whether whether you have a need for international teachers to bring in your curriculum teachers or your in language teachers or academic teachers or teachers that might be just like two blocks away from your school but they, they, they just didn't know how to find you. So that's what the vision of TeacherX is. And like I said, we're at 10,000 teachers now. We would like to be in a couple of years, we'd like to be at at least 100,000 teachers plus. And um, w once we increase the database of educators, it automatically brings in more jobs and more schools um, to us. Amazing. And uh, in terms of the geographies that you're focusing on is also wide and really i was just checking your website on teacherx.com and i've seen some postings for china or for other places so it really shows that you are really going global but also to your point you're you know thinking globally but acting locally which really also makes a difference for uh, teacherx uh, that is correct what you mentioned there's posting a chinese uh, chain school that we had signed a contract uh, now, what happened with them is when they went and posted these jobs and we were looking for teachers to bring in from Canada and U.S. and all this. And then all of a sudden, I think it was day before yesterday, we have some teachers that are in that region, that district, Ningbo district, where the school is. And they contacted us and they said, you know, we would I am already here. I have my visas taken care of. So can you arrange an interview? So that's that's how we want to be. Amazing. Uh, I think you are really driving, and I'm sure that 10,000 teacher pool will grow rapidly because of your access 
and really hard work that you're doing and also because of this show which is actually broadcasting to more than 900 million viewers across more than 40 countries so for our viewers sean whether they are a university whether they are a teacher or a student what they can do what can teacherix offer for them and how can they contact you okay so um uh, uh, was, uh, our, our, uh, our friendship goes way, way beyond, uh, you know, this, this show and business. So I had already decided last night that I will have a special, I discussed with the team and I, I decided I'm going to have a special offering for you when I go on the show. I would like uh, your viewers, uh, I know that you have a very uh, spread reach in, in various regions in Africa, and I would like your viewers to um, offer them that for, for if they are teachers and looking for teaching job. I would suggest that they go on the site and um, they, they create their profile and no subscription fee, totally free for them. There is no charge. We never charge teachers. We There are other options, subscription they can you know purchase, but it, it's just not mandatory. So they should go complete their profile with all the details about their experience, education, because this is what happens when we get a job request. First thing our consultants do is go and search filter which teachers are ready to go to that country? So they have many different options when they create their profile as a teacher. They pick options, I want to go to Turkey. And, and by the way, Turkey takes a lot of teachers from various different countries in Africa, as you know. So we have employed probably last year more than 35 teachers uh, from uh, Africa in, in Turkish schools. And that number is increasing because they, they're fluent in English and they can carry on and they can adapt to living in Turkey. So I would suggest that they would go and create their profile. Now, for the schools that are listening to your show, and I'm sure there are a number of them, so what we do is we charge a recruitment fee, which is roughly between 2000 and 3000 US dollars per teacher. So what I'm willing to do is there is a joining fee of 650 US dollars. That means we do the due diligence on that school. I will waive the recruitment fee of 2000 or 3000 per teacher. That means if you were to get 10 teacher, it would cost you $30,000. I will waive that. Just join in with the 650 joining fee, do the due diligence, and we'll post all the jobs and make it live for you. This is just uh, for the sake of your show, and we want to get those schools because you know we have a lot of teachers from the region as well. We uh, there's a lot of IB schools, there's a lot of uh, you know different curriculum schools in Africa, uh, private schools, so they can access all those teachers internationally and as well as locally. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an amazing offer, a one-time offer. So go to www.teacherx.com, make sure you create your profile. And as the founder of TeacherX mentioned, this is a one-time offer. So make sure that you don't miss this opportunity. And also mention that you have seen this uh, program on Natural TV. I really appreciate, Sean. This is really exciting because at the end, Africa is rising. Africa is one of the most exciting continents and people are really uh, going beyond in terms of technology, improvement. And these are real opportunities, tangible opportunities that we can offer to our African brothers and sisters and also help them help themselves so they can also help their communities. I really want to thank you on behalf of Natural TV for making this offer on behalf of TeacherX, Sean. And in terms of uh, what you think, your final words about uh, for our African brothers and sisters, Sean, what do you want to say? What is your suggestion? And what do you think about natural TV and sit study in Turkey? OK, so um, I will start with your, uh, your first question, um, and then I'll go on the rest two of them. So the first one about our African brothers and sisters. Uh, my, I've been recruiting teachers for past six years, and I have come across uh, amazing, hardworking uh, teachers from that region. My advice to them is always invest in improvement and self-improvement. Um, always take certificate. You can take even online courses to improve yourself. Because at the end of the day, when a resume comes in front of me, I look at the education sector. I look at the experience. Then we look at what self-improvement they have done. Just like a doctor that every few months uh, doctors are, you know, upgrading their education and going attending these conference and seminars and keeping up with science, uh, people forget teaching is the same. As technology develops, 
if you lack knowledge in, in, in utilization of technology, guess what? You will not become a good teacher. I'll just give you a little uh, story about myself. When I first came to Turkey, I was a replacement teacher. So the actual teacher was a Canadian teacher that was hired, uh, didn't make it or couldn't make it. And he sent the note right at the start of the school. So school was in a panic and they sent me a letter. They said, we will hire you. But if you can be in Turkey within five days, which is, you know, very quick, you know, settling up your affairs back home and then coming here and all this. So I, you know, I love a challenge and I said, you know, I'll manage this. So when I came, the classes had already started. So I had missed the orientation uh, session. So when I, they gave me a schedule, they gave me some, something like a flash drive, a clicker, and they said, good luck, it's your first class. And I walked into the classroom and there was no blackboard. You know, I'm, you were used to using blackboard and green board and chalkboard and stuff. You know, schools in in U.S. and Canada are not smart boards. And, and this is in 2000, I think, 12 or 13. So when I walked into the classroom and I was very shocked, I'm like, the smart board, what do I do with this? But I, I use, you know, I started asking students, see who is the smartest one who could use this. And they all raised hand. They came up and they taught me. But I mean, the students saved my life. But basically... I want these teachers to be, you know, up on the, the, the technology field. I want them to improve themselves. I want them to take, uh, if possible, because it, it does help if you have a neutral English accent. And I'm not being, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not talking about having an American or British accent. No, I'm talking about a neutral accent. This is what airline does when they hire flight attendants and they give them lessons on that because it'll make you a more understandable and the kids will comprehend you better. This is my advice to them. They're very hardworking. They come along here and, and some of them hold jobs for years. So I would say, you know, this is the first thing. Um, the second thing about um, your television station, I, I, I would like to say I was uh, day before yesterday was uh, my first research into it. And I was very shocked to find out thousands of videos. I thought it was something new that had just started, but You've done a really a lot of work, and uh, I, I enjoyed. I watched two or three of your shows last night before going to bed, and it was really nice to see you bring all these different information. I think one of your shows was just covering various different information with science and technology. So it's amazing what you're doing, and, and and anything that we can do to help you progress this, I would be more than happy to. Uh, as a friend, I'm really delighted that I'm able to uh, have my viewers get to know yourself and your amazing team. I want to, uh, you know, convey my regards to your amazing team and the entire TeacherX team on, on your behalf. And uh, I wish you the best. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure to check TeacherX.com. You can always reach to Sean Hyder through his LinkedIn as well. He's very active on LinkedIn. And again, this is an opportunity for our African brothers and sisters. If you are a person who wants to develop himself, herself, open for new opportunities to teach. Because to learn, the best way is to teach. So Sean is actually offering that across the world. So go to teacherx.com, make sure to create your profile, and then be in touch with Sean Heider. Sean, and, and last word before I close. Have, because you could we also have, have teacherx.com. Uh, on, on the banner so they can they can copy the uh, you know the address so they can log on to it and we are actually entering another mutual broadcasting with trt world turkish radio television so uh, we are right now at the end of our show i really want to thank you for your time sean thanks a lot gentlemen uh, this was another day which we have started a new program after five technology news idea to business and World Health News, today was the first day we started study in Turkey. So I'm really excited that I'm able to offer across a natural TV to our 900 million viewers shows about health, shows about authentic technology news, shows about business, and now shows about education. And today I had a phenomenal gentleman, Sean Heider, who is the founder of TeacherX.com. And we're going to bring also many other people around the world, also university rectors from Turkey that you can directly reach out because there are more than 210 universities in Turkey. 
So thank you very much. Stay tuned to sit and study in Turkey and we'll be in touch with you. Take care and all the best. Bye.